so in the previous lecture we have discussed an example where we looked at the application of direct product in solving energy elements right so in this one we'll look at one more application of direct product where we'll be looking at something called as spectral transition probabilities spectral transition probability so what is it what is the meaning of this term let us first try to understand that so if we have two energy levels if you are trying to perform spectroscopy and we have two energy levels let's say e1 and e2 and then there is energy difference between this which is defined by nu so the energy corresponding to h nu will be able to carry out the transition from e1 to e2 right and whether this transition will take place or not will be defined by the selection rules right so selection rules will tell you this you must have learned in spectroscopy that uh, whether the transition will be possible or not so let's say how does the selection rule come actually so the intensity will of this transition will be directly proportional to psi 1 mu psi 2 d tau okay so where psi 1 defines the state for the state 1 and psi 2 defines this state the excited state right and mu what is mu so mu is called as transition moment operator so which can take different forms as in it can correspond to so mu can correspond to changes in electric or magnetic dipole polarizability tensor etc so depending on what type of spectroscopy we are using so let's say uh, in this case we are considering electric dipole allowed transitions okay so electric dipole allowed transitions so what is the meaning of this that means uh, the charge distribution in ground state and excited state corresponds to or differ in a manner which is similar to a electric dipole so here charge distribution between the state 1 and state 2 or that is the ground state and excited state forms like a electric dipole over here so if this electric dipole can now interact with the oscillating electric field vector of the electromagnetic radiation and then that interaction leads to either absorption of energy by the system or uh, release of energy by the system then we say that there is a transition which has been carried out right there is a change in the dipole moment that has been carried out because of the applied frequency right so now let's say that the what is the form of uh, mu so mu can be written as summation ei xi plus summation ei yi summation ei zi right and this will be summation over all i actually summation can be taken common here okay so uh, what is ei ei is charge on ith particle
and uh, x i y i z i are the coordinates of the particle right so these are the coordinates and uh, charge so now that means if i want to uh, write the the intensity factor again so i can say that the intensity in x is proportional to integration of psi i x psi j or you can write one two here d tau similarly intensity along y will be proportional to psi i y psi j d tau and intensity along z will be similarly proportional to psi i z psi j d tau now i will not be equal to zero if any of this i x i y or i z is not equal to zero right so you can take if i x is not equal to zero then also the total intensity will not be equal to zero or if i y is not equal to zero total intensity will not be equal to zero and so on right so what we need to calculate we need to calculate individual contribution of intensities and if any one of them is non equal, not equal to zero we will say that the spectral transition will happen otherwise the spectral transition will be forbidden and that's how you define the selection rules whether these two states will have transition from one state to another or not given the particular frequency the spectra will be transition will be allowed otherwise it will be disallowed right so now let's say when this integration will be non-zero the integration will be non-zero when the direct product of the psi i x psi j i mean the corresponding ir representations will contain totally symmetric representation so i x will not be equal zero if psi i x psi j corresponds to IR representations whose direct product contains TSR, right? And similarly, we can say for IY and IZ. Now, there is interesting thing that we have x, one of the function, we know that it's a unit vector along x, right? x can be treated as unit vector, y is unit vector along y, z is unit vector along z, right? So, we already know if we refer to any character table, we already know the IR representation corresponding to x, right? and similarly corresponding to y so that that means we can reduce this condition to if psi i and psi j uh, correspond to ir representations whose direct product contains an IR which has X as the basis because if it will have X as the basis that would mean that the direct triple direct product will contain A1 right similarly for y and z will follow right to see right so we can now write a statement that an electric dipole
to transition will be allowed with x y or z polarization so y x y or z polarization because this is the polarity of the radiation which is applied right if the direct product of the representations of the two states which are psi i psi j and psi i two states concerned is or contains it's the irreducible representation to which x y or z belongs so if psi i and psi j together will form a direct product which either corresponds to an ir representation containing x or contains an ir representation with basis x y or z then the direct this integration will survive and then we will say that the integration is not equal to zero and then thus the spectral transition will happen otherwise the spectral transition will be forbidden so now let's uh, look at an example uh, we'll try to see if we can solve it so let me frame the question first so uh, it's a solved example in cotton but let's see how to do this so let's say some metal we are talking about metal based electronic transition of MO2 Cl8 minus, right? Yeah, Cl8 4 minus species. So first of all, the structure of the molecule is given, so which is uh, MO and this will be Cl Cl, Cl, and then you have another one. It's like a sandwich. We have two planar molecules, and then there is a metal metal bond over here in between. Okay, and the whole thing has four negative charges. So let's say if you want to draw the x y coordinates. Uh, we can will be the z axis will be passing through this right and we can say that our x will be passing through one of this so we can write draw x like this and y will be passing through one another cl bond so we can say our y will be like this right so try to imagine this let me draw it like this in different color right it's too bad So this is the molecule which is uh, not square planar but you can say that it's a square 
parallelopiped or square prism also you can say right and we can also say that the point group will be like square planar so it will be d4h right because there is a symmetry sigma h over there passing through the metal metal bond right now so now they say that uh, this is the molecule and homo of this is homo is the highest or occupied molecular orbital is delta orbital which is basically composed of dxy orbital and it takes the shape like something like this so this is the delta orbital and this is given in the question and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital which is delta star it's also composed of dxy but now there is a change in symmetry so we have this one is same Whereas here there is a change of negative and positives. So you have plus and minus, right? So you can see that these two are different. So this whole thing constitutes delta and this whole thing constitutes delta star. So these, these are two dxy orbitals which are kept on top of each other. And in this one there is a phase difference between the two and that's how there is a this is called as delta star and this is with same phase so this is delta now i will write down the question which this is asking so we need to see whether if delta to delta star that is homo to lumo transition so homo to lumo is electric dipole allowed or not this is the question they are asking so that means what we need to do is we need to set up a integration where we need to see whether psi d psi delta x y z and psi delta star d tau now this integration whether this is equal to zero or is not equal to zero right so we have to identify this so what do you do in such a case uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to first identify what is the basis for uh, these orbitals under d4h point group okay so d4h point group let me write down the symmetry elements so this will be 2c4 c2 2c2 prime 2c2 double prime i s4 b2 sigma h 2 sigma v 2 sigma t right now for delta and for delta star what we need to do is we need to carry out these operations these operations and see what is the fate of this uh, delta orbital and delta star orbital and depending on that we'll need to give the characters over here okay so i would suggest you to do it uh, i'm not going to show it how to do it here so e will be one for both so if you do a c4 operation so if i do a c4 operation plus goes to minus the negative lobe goes towards the positive lobe and positive lobe goes to the negative lobe and this happens for all of them so that means all the positive signs go to negative all the negative signs becomes positive right so this would mean that you have the character under c4 as negative one for both the orbitals right similarly if you do a c2 the positive is exchanged with positive because opposite it's a 180 degree rotation now 
along z axis so positive goes to positive negative go to negative and so on so c2 character is plus 1 so in a same way you can carry out all these and find out the character so i will just note down the characters from my notes and these are 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 so remember that you have to take both the orbitals together and orient it along the coordinate system as they are because it's you know it's a dxy orbital and once you do that you should be able to carry out all these operations so try to do it yourself so that you know how to find this out so once you do that and you find out uh, what is my uh, representation corresponding to delta and delta star now i can now compare it with the standard character table of t4h and find out that my delta is actually so one of them is b1g and the other one is b2u okay so now i have find out the ir representation corresponding to the basis delta and delta star now for x y and z z corresponds as a to u so this can be read read from the character table so you know the unit vector transformations are written in this area and then what is the ir representation corresponding to z you can find out and x y is jointly forming the basis for eu representation okay so now what you have to do is now the problem is simplified to finding the direct product between b1g eu and b2u that is one for x and y and for z you have to do that b1g a2u and b2u so as it turns out if you do this calculation all you have to do is you have to multiply the corresponding characters and uh, traces and find out what is the ir representation here whether it contains a totally symmetric representation or not so as a matter of fact this one contains a1g plus something else it may contain but one of the representation is a totally symmetric representation right so if it contains totally symmetric that means we can make a statement now that uh, delta to delta star transition is allowed or you can say electric dipole allowed because that is the form of mu which we have taken here electric dipole allowed with z polarization because we found tsr only in z integral right the other integral which was x y integral we did not find a 1 g so then we can say that and forbidden for radiation with its electric vector in the xy plane right so look at the power of this uh, method so you now know not only the selection rule whether the transition will be allowed or not but you also know with what polarization the particular transition will be allowed so you 
you don't need to actually throw in the light with all polarization so you, if you just throw in the light with z polarization the electric dipole transition will be allowed because xy light is not being used here right so you not only come to know whether a transition is allowed or disallowed but you also get the details of which polarization the transition is allowed so with this uh, we finish the direct product application and in next class we'll be looking at uh, symmetry adapted linear combination so we'll be looking at the chemical bonding and all all right that is all for today